St. Croix is definitely a unique island. From a geologic standpoint, it certainly is. Now we're gonna look over here on the west side of the island here. Here is Frederickstead. And north of Frederickstead is an area that's called Ham's Bluff. And this whole region here is pretty much dominated by a type of rock called Caledonia, the Caledonia Formation, on the very far western end of the island. Over here on the eastern side, you'll also find large amounts of this Caledonia Formation. Remember, St. Croix is actually two different islands joined together for the most part by an area called the Kings Hill Marl right here, which was, uh, it is a graben, so it's a lower area, a drop in elevation. And it's also a place where you're going to find marine sediment that has been deposited over 20 million years. It's amazing how, how this stuff has all come together. But keep in mind, no volcanoes on this island. So let's look at this rock a little bit. Here's some of that Kings Hill Marl. And we can see that there are some, with this acid here, we see some fizzing happening. And that indicates that there is a calcium carbonate present here in this rock. Now the Caledonia, on the other hand, is actually made out of material from volcanoes, but it's a, still a sedimentary rock. But unlike the uh, Kings Hill Marl, this does not really react to acids. So that's it from the laboratory. Let's get out in the field and see what's going on with this geology here on St. Croix. Flying onto St. Croix from the west, you can see the town of Frederickstead and the turquoise water of the Caribbean Sea. The mountains in the distance are the Maroon Mountains, and that's where we are going. After we land at the airport, we will make our way to the northwestern side of St. Croix and Tom will meet you there. The Wetton 1966 maps are a useful way to explore the geology of St. Croix. Tom will be using the maps to point out each of the locations that we are learning about as he continues to describe the unique geology of St. Croix. The red lines indicate the rock type and general location of each geologic unit. So here we are on the northwest side of St. Croix, and this rock here is called the beach alluvium. And the beach alluvium is probably the youngest rock you'll find here on St. Croix. A mere 125,000 years has this rock existed. It's basically made up out of shell and uh, marine material that was deposited and then basically lithified, turned into rock. Again, calcium carbonate present, so it will react to an acid and uh, that's one of the ways that we know uh, what type of rock this is. As you can see, this area is constantly being weathered and eroded. Uh, a lot of physical weathering going on, chemical weathering, and uh, erosion caused by the Caribbean Sea right out here behind me. And those waters, again, the, the Virgin Islands Basin out that way drops about 14,000 feet, not very far off this coast. But we're not going that way. We're actually heading up this way, up toward Ham's Bluff. And Ham's Bluff is the place where we're going to hopefully find the Caledonia Rock. The Caledonia, if you remember, was that volcanic rock that had been deposited in the ocean, in the Caribbean Sea, deposited, accumulated in layers, and then ultimately was uplifted, was moved and basically deposited into two main sections, the eastern and the western side of St. Croix. And we're going to take a look at that at Ham's Bluff right now. While Tom drives to the trailhead at Ham's Bluff, let's look at this USGS map and examine some of the oceanic context that surrounds St. Croix. The bold numbers that look like dates on the map resent the years when earthquakes above 7.0 occurred. St. Croix is on the Caribbean plate and this island has anticlines and synclines as well as several types of faults. The fourth edition of Earth Systems History on page 504 explains that the Caribbean was once a part of the Pacific Plate and later it became its own plate during Cenozoic time. As you can see on the map St. Croix is surrounded by very deep water caused by deep subduction zones. Between St. Croix and Puerto Rico is the deep Virgin Island Basin it's 14,000 feet deep. 
On the other side of Puerto Rico is a trench that is more than 27,000 feet deep. As you can see this area continues to tell a very active and complex story. Well, let's go and see if we can find Tom. Wow, after a really good climb, I have emerged out of the rainforest and I am at Ham's Bluff. Right there is the old lighthouse, right here at Ham's Bluff. Off in this direction toward the north, we have the island of St. Thomas and St. John, about 50 miles that direction. Moving on this way toward the east, looking down, we see the Maroon Mountain chain and also the Eagle Mountain off in the distance. But beyond St. Croix is this arc of islands that we call the Lesser Antilles. And the Lesser Antilles really are all islands that are made out of volcanoes. If you look on the map, you'll see volcano after volcano. And a lot of that action, of volcanic action, has really come from the fact that there is a subduction zone over here, the North American plate. There's also a subduction zone over here past uh, the Caribbean plate as well. So that material is pushed down underneath the earth. It becomes less dense, rises and becomes volcanoes. Somewhere around 80 million years ago, that volcanic material spewed out and broke apart and became layers and, a sh and the sea basically. And those layers became the Caledonia formation that we see here on St. Croix. Tom is literally standing on sedimentary rock that was once igneous rock. This is an example of rock cycle transformation and it involved the weathering of ancient volcanic rocks and later the settling of those tiny rock fragments in a very deep marine basin. The Wetton 1966 map now provides us with an overview of the Caledonia Formation at Ham's Bluff. Notice the purple circle and plus marks on the map. I think Tom is going to hike down and stop at a Caledonia Formation outcrop along the trail. Let's see if we can find him. Here on the northwestern side of St. Croix is an amazing little trail that goes up to Ham's Bluff. And it gives you such a great idea of some of the plant diversity here. And also you have to remember that the diversity of plants is connected to the soil. And then that soil, of course, goes back to our geologic story, the story of sedimentary rocks that formed out of igneous rocks. I've stopped at this location because there's a great little outcrop of the Caledonia Formation right here. So this rock I'm holding is probably about 80 million years old. It was formed from volcanic material that was deposited somewhere in a basin in the Caribbean Sea. Layer upon layer of this volcanic rock, broken down into little bits, settled, and eventually was uplifted and moved, becoming the two islands that make up St. Croix. So this is our first outcrop here on this mountain of the Caledonia Formation a sedimentary rock here on this island. While Tom continues down the mountain, let's look at the location that joins the eastern and western sides of St. Croix. Tom is on his way to a central regional plain known as a graben. A graben is lower valley bordered by steeper geologic strata. Let's see if we can figure out how this part of the story unfolded. The Kings Hill Marl and the Ancient Seaway is indicated by the red lines on the Wetton 1966 map. Most of the rocks in the Graben are about 20 million years old. Unlike the other rocks that we have seen, the marls are made up small marine creatures, planktonic foraminifera that lived in a marine environment that would have seen coral reefs come and go with the changes of sea level. After millions of years these layers of small creatures became lithified rocks that through tectonic uplift became caliche and rock units such as the Jealousy Formation and the Kings Hill Marl. Let's take a closer look. So I've made my way down from Ham's Bluff and now I am in the Graben area, the area known as the Kings Hill. Kings Hill Marl is what's behind me here. This material settled this material was living organisms, foraminifera, a variety of different uh, sea, small sea creatures. Layer upon layer of these sea creatures died and sank and settled into this area. 
So this is Kings Hill Marl. And this is what basically binds the eastern side of St. Croix with the western side of St. Croix. This is a vast area. This is a very large area of the Kings Hill Marl. And just an amazing thing to be able to see this type of rock right here made out of what was once living organisms. Now that we have seen some of the amazing geology of St. Croix, we end our journey on the east end of the island that was as Tom said, a different island separated from the western side. And just like much of the island we will find Caledonia formation rocks. These rocks have been dated using potassium argon radiometric dating. The east end member of the Caledonia formation tested age is 66 to 75.2 million years ago. One additional discovery was also noted, there were ammonite fossils also found on the east side of the island. Let's take a look at some of these southern and eastern Caledonia rocks. So this material has been laid down layer upon layer underneath the ocean and then it was uplifted and tilted. And this is, again, some of that tufaceous material and Caledonia. We hope you enjoyed this brief geologic visit to St. Croix. Thank you.